Puzzle games have long been one of my favourite genre of video game. Despite their simplicity, they often require a perfect blend of hand-eye coordination, forward thinking and quick reactions to be played well. While everybody knows that Tetris is the granddaddy of all puzzle games, there are also some fantastic alternatives out there, ready to be played right now. In this video I'm going to be covering some of the best puzzle games I've played over the years. Some of these you may already have heard of or even played yourself, but there may be one or two that you've yet to play. My name's Got Cake, and these are great puzzle game alternatives to Tetris. We'll kick things off with some old school and a game that I played ridiculous amounts of as a kid, Columns. In Columns you're given a vertical row of three gems of varying shapes and colours. Your job is to match a row of three gems of the same colour either vertically, horizontally or diagonally. Doing this destroys the gems and drops down any gems sitting on them. Over time the rate at which gems fall speeds up and if your play field fills with gems and reaches the top of the screen, it's game over. Every so often a special multicolour block appears, which clears the playfield of all blocks of the colour that it lands on. Columns is about as simple as a puzzle game gets, and the challenge is with matching gems to create a combo. Like Tetris, there have been numerous sequels and clones of Columns. The game can be played on a Sega Mega Drive collection for the PS2 and PlayStation Portable, Sonic's Ultimate Mega Drive collection for the PS3 and Xbox 360, and both Columns and Columns 3 can be played on Sega Mega Drive Classics for Windows, Mac and Linux as well as PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Originally released for the Sony PSP, Lumens is a wonderful blend of music and puzzle genres. The player's objective is to create 2x2 two two blocks of the same colour by rotating pieces and placing them in the playfield. A line continually passes from one end of the playfield to the other and erases any of the 2x2 two two blocks created. The colour and shape of blocks change along with the music and the BPM of the current track affects the speed that the erase line moves at. This change in BPM affects the gameplay, as with a slower BPM song you've got time to create bigger combos but run the risk of filling your screen up before you manage to erase the blocks. A track with a faster BPM erases blocks more frequently, but you'll have to work quickly to create combos and erase multiple blocks at once. The player loses if the game's player field fills up to the top of the screen with blocks. Since the original PSP release, Lumens has had several sequels and ports to many different platforms and consoles, with the latest iteration of the game releasing in 2018 as Lumens Remastered. This HD remaster of the game features over 40 different music tracks to puzzle to, as well as a huge number of different modes to choose from, including Challenge, Time Attack, Puzzle and Mission Modes, as well as both CPU and 2 player battle modes. Lumens Remastered is available on Steam, PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. And yeah I know, you're probably going to tell me it's pronounced Luminez. I don't care, I'm Northern. Chime was originally released on the Xbox Live Arcade in 2010, before hitting the PlayStation Network the following year as Chime Super Deluxe. Gameplay focuses on moving around and rotating blocks to create quads of solid blocks, with at least 3x3 dimensions. Each stage features a different music track and changes the shape of the blocks you place in, which gives the game some variety, as you need to learn the best way to jigsaw the different sets of pieces together. Like with Lumens, a line moves across the screen to the beat of the music and erases the quads as it passes over them. Once erased, the play field beneath the quads becomes covered and changes colour, with the objective of the primary game mode to cover as much of the play field as possible, with the music becoming progressively more complex as the play field gets coverage. The latest version of the game, called Chime Sharp, features several additional game modes which change the gameplay mechanics. For example, Chime Sharp mode has no time limit, but instead starts you with 10 lives. If you leave fragments of blocks on the playfield, you'll lose lives after the erase line passes over them a few times. You can regain lives by creating perfect quads, and when your lives reach zero, the game ends. Chime Sharp is out on all PC platforms, as well as PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. For this next game, we're going to go super retro, with Nintendo's 1990 Smash NES puzzler, Dr Mario. The player's objective in this game is to destroy the viruses occupying the game's playing field by manoeuvring coloured capsules dropped by Dr Mario. Capsules come in a combination of yellow, red and blue, 
and you need to create a line of four matching colours either vertically or horizontally. If a virus is included in this line, it will be destroyed alongside the pill segments, with any undestroyed pill segments dropping down the player field. The game starts off very easy with only a few viruses to destroy, but can quickly become overwhelming as you progress through the levels. Unlike Tetris where you can slide pieces once they land, pills are instantly locked in place as soon as they hit something, which makes fast reactions and forward thinking a must to conquer the later levels. Dr Mario was released for the Nintendo Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, but it can also be played right now on Nintendo Switch, providing you have a Nintendo Switch Online account. It's included in the NES emulator's collection of games. Up next is one of my all time favourite puzzle games, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. There was never actually a Super Puzzle Fighter, the game's name was a parody of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. While the original was released in coin up arcade machines, the game came to the original PlayStation in 1997 and then to PS3 and Xbox as a HD remix in 2007. The game sees you facing off against either a player or computer controlled opponent with the objective of stacking pairs of blocks or gems next to gems of the same colour. These gems can combine to form larger gems as more are stacked together. Gems are then shattered by placing a crash gem of the same colour next to them. This in turn causes coloured timer blocks to fall on your opponent's play field. Once the timer blocks expire, they become normal gem blocks. You get to pick from one of eight standard characters, with each character having a different timer block drop pattern and there are also six secret unlockable characters. As you play, your character will fight against your opponent's character, and whoever's play field fills up with blocks first loses. The game can currently be played on PlayStation via the PS Now service, or Xbox One through the backwards compatibility support. While fans of the game have been crying out for a remake for years, sadly Capcom haven't fulfilled the wishes. However, a game titled Crystal Crisis released last year on Steam, and it's practically a spiritual successor to the game in all but name. Puyo Puyo may be the least well known game in this list, but I guarantee most people will have heard of it in at least one of its many forms. Other titles it goes by are the Puyo Pop series of games, and the westernised variant, marketed under the Sonic franchise, known as Dr Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. In a similar vein to Dr Mario and Super Puzzle Fire, the game has you manoeuvring pairs of blocks, or in this case, Puyos or Beans, into formation whereby four blocks are touching. This will then destroy the group of four blocks, and if you're playing against an opponent, drop transparent Puyos or Beans onto your opponent's playfield. The transparent blocks can only be destroyed by destroying blocks next to them, and if your play field is filled to the top, the game is lost. The best strategy to win is to group a set of three blocks and then split them with a different colour block. You then repeat this action to create several rows and then line up a set of matching blocks in such a way that a cascade is caused when each colour falls down. Creating combos in this way are much more devastating than just destroying single sets of blocks and it causes many more transparent blocks to be transferred to your opponent. Currently, there's several options available for playing Puyo Puyo or one of its variants. The Nintendo Switch Online SNES emulator comes with Super Puyo Puyo 2, a 995 version of the game. It is in Japanese, but the menu icons are relatively easy to navigate, with Puyo's indicating the number of players. If you want to play a Mean Bean Machine, then you can play it on Sega Mega Drive Classics for the PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Alternatively, if you own Sonic Mania, the game can be unlocked by obtaining 20 silver medals from within the main game's Blue Sphere special stages. Finally, a game which delivers the best of both worlds is Puyo Puyo Tetris. I'm currently showing footage of the Japanese version of the game, as it wasn't until a couple of years ago that it was actually released outside of Japan. In Puyo Puyo Tetris, there are many different gameplay modes to choose from, including a story mode, standard versus modes and challenges. Several modes feature a mix of Puyo Puyo and Tetris, with gameplay switching between the two every so often. Or if you prefer, you can just choose to play Puyo Puyo or Tetris on their own without any switching. Puyo Puyo Tetris is available on Steam, PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Our final game is one which I've played recently and really enjoyed. 
Released last week on the Nintendo Switch, Oaris DX is a game which puts a spin on Tetris mechanics while still feeling very Tetris-like. The usual Tetris gameplay of creating a line of blocks to destroy them still applies, but the main focus of this game is to destroy the heads of the sea creatures that each shape represents. Doing this also destroys the rest of the body of the block, and blocks above drop down to fill the gaps. Having not played the original Oaris, this unique mechanic was unlike anything I'd experienced in a puzzle game, and it surprised me by how much it changes the gameplay. The game includes a mission mode tasking you with destroying a single piece by placing it in such a way that it destroys the block's head. It also has battle and co-op modes for some two-player puzzling. You can see my full review on the game by clicking the link in the description below or heading to my channel page. At the moment the game is currently only available for the Nintendo Switch. Well that about wraps it up for this selection of puzzle games. But before I go I've got a couple of honourable mentions for puzzle games that stray too far from being Tetris like but are still fantastic puzzle games and that are a must play. First up is Peggle 2. Originally a mobile game, Peggle is a pachinko inspired physics puzzler where you use a ball to destroy coloured pegs on a board. To complete a level you've got to destroy all the orange pegs and doing so causes an eruption of fireworks and classical music. The game features loads of different levels and several different unlockable characters each with their own special abilities. It's great fun and can be picked up on the PS4, Xbox 360 and Xbox One and it also comes as part of the EA Access Pass on both consoles. My second honourable mention is another fantastic puzzler and one which I wish would be remastered for modern consoles. It goes by two different names depending on what region you're in. In America it was known as IQ, Intelligent Cube with a Q, and in Europe it was known as Kurushi. Released on the original PlayStation in 1997, the game has you playing as a tiny man standing on a massive platform made of cubes. As each round starts, several rows of cubes rise up in sections and roll towards you and the end of the platform. To destroy the cubes, you've got to mark the floor and then detonate it as the cubes roll over it. There are a couple of different types of cubes. Firstly, there are green cubes, which when detonated leave green markers on the floor. These can then be activated to detonate a 3x3 three three square of cubes around them. The black cubes are the ones that you want to avoid detonating, instead leaving them to roll and fall off the end of the platform. Should any non-black cubes fall off, a roll will be removed from the end of your platform. However, if you destroy all non-black cubes in the least amount of moves, you'll gain an extra roll. If at any point you get squished by the rolling cubes, the whole roll will roll past you off the edge of the platform. The footage I'm showing is from its sequel, Kurushi Final, Mental Blocks, and it was released in 1998, but sadly, it too is only available for the original PlayStation. And so we've come to the end of this video on my suggestion of great Tetris alternatives. If you've got any suggestions for games that I've missed off this list, or just some other great puzzle games in general, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks once again for watching, don't forget to like the video if you did, subscribe for future videos and until next time, game on.